Hello, Anya. <laughs> Привет, Anya. Привет, Алекс. Как дела? Хорошо. Очень? Mm, не очень. Не очень? Да. Не, не, ты отлично. <laughs> Спасибо. <laughs> а ты? А, да. Все хорошо сейчас. <laughs> Вкусно, да? <laughs> да. Uh, так, as you know, I don't speak Russian that great. I think you did well. Спасибо большое. Uh, well, sometimes, sometimes people kind of you know, go, oh, you do great, and then they go, can you say something else? I'm like, I don't know what to say. You're like, I only know that. I only know that. I only know that. And they go, okay, and your Russian is terrible. <laughs> You're learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. With everything that I want to do and everything that we've both done, you have such an interesting background before all that. But let's begin from mm. the very beginning. What happened? Where, did, where were you born? Mm. And when did you come here? Um, so I was born in, well, Novokuznetsk. It's, uh, it's in Siberia, so Siberia, Russia. Um, and yeah, in 1996, I'm 24. I came to New Zealand on Christmas Day, so December 25th of 2001. 2001. And yeah. do you have a few memories or yeah, I do. of I, Russia? Yeah. It's always that feeling of like maybe it's a memory of a memory though. So I vaguely remember like the layout of the room. I remember my parents told me to like draw it up. So I did. And it ended up being exactly the same. Crazy. I know. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember little things like going to bed and thinking that I had the only window next to my bed and I did have that or sharing like one toothbrush between many people or sharing toys some of the things like that and I remember um, going into like a room and seeing my brother because we were like separated by age groups so what do you know about your your birth family side brothers sisters or what do you yeah. know about your birth parents so um, just first of all I was adopted with my brother we found out it's my half brother Simeon and then we found out later that I have, um, there's six of us in total, so I have four other siblings in Russia now. So one's a bit older, Maxim, and then the other three are all like full blood, um, and they're a bit younger, around 19, yeah. So it's good that you know those pieces. Yeah, Because a lot of, you know, a lot of doctor people don't know anything about their siblings. Yeah. And you, so you've always known that from the beginning, have you, about your um, siblings? No. So yeah, we only learnt about them when I found my family. So when I was like 10. So later, so. On, later on when you got a bit older. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so here in New Zealand, when you first came here, was it, was it, were your parents very open about your adoption, um, the Russian culture and the family? Mm -hmm. Or how did that go about? I mean, I was five, so I already knew like everything. I could remember everything. Um, and I think they gave me the option to keep learning Russian but there's just no one here in New Zealand that I could like speak with. So I just said, what's the point? So I just kind of felt like I just wanted to fit in. Mm. Um, and so I just dropped that. But it's not not to say that I dropped like the whole culture or anything. I remember my mum would make borscht sometimes. Um, oh, that's nice. You love borscht. <laughs> I do like borscht. So we had the little things like that. Um, and, and I always kind of, whenever I met Russian people, I always felt really connected to them. So. Yeah. Ever since the beginning, you've always felt connected. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's not like I met many Russians here, but whenever yeah. I did, or other adoptees, I really like just felt connected. Yeah. Like I felt it's a, big yeah, thing. a part of something. Because I, being, you feel like you don't know exactly what you're a part of, but you feel yeah. like you are connected with them somehow. Yeah, you, yeah. Just, you just have this thing that no one quite understands. Um, no one can quite like, not sympathise, but kind of, yeah, just get. Yeah. And so to have someone be like, yes, I know exactly, you know, I've tried to fit in my whole life. Um, it's pretty, yeah. So I, I grew up with two other adoptees really close, like we're really close. So that was really nice. I think I was very lucky to have that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one of them was from where you're from as well, so. It's good to relate with some other children your age growing up. Yeah. Who also adopted because you can ask them questions, they can ask you questions yeah, and you can completely. talk about it. Because I had friends in school mm -hmm. that had no idea. They couldn't relate to anything with mm. my brother and I, our, our journey of us yeah. coming from an orphanage. Because the average friend at school would be thinking, this is, I don't understand this. Yeah. But when you meet somebody in a support group or friends that you had, they were also adopted, you mm. feel that connection a lot more. Yeah. And the more you grow older, you start learning a lot more too. 
And you can kind of together put the pieces together. Like, yeah. yeah. One of my earliest memories when I was in New Zealand was actually just like going to bed and like kind of crying actually. And you just kind of cry to, and ask um, like what happened to my mom and like what happened there and like how did I end up here? And I was very young and I, my parents always said like, yeah, we'll try find the answers. We're going to try find them Support out with you. your parents. So like they were really open. Mm. There was, it's not like a closed adoption or anything. I remember they, they, they kind of encouraged that, um, that whole journey to find my family. And they even said that they were like supported. So that was very special. It kind of was just fitting that my mm. parents were like, yes, we'll, we'll try our best because it also made me feel more connected to them because it's like they're not trying to hide anything. So we got a private investigator and I didn't really follow the journey of like him and what he did. Mm. At the time, I was just more interested in the results. So um, the first known result was around like 2009, 2010. Um, and we received photographs of like Russia first and then later we found my mum and we found out that she had other, um, other children, so other siblings for us. Um, and then with that, like we sent a photo over to her of us and a letter, which we translated, and she sent it back. So with all these photos of her and the, all her other children. So I think when that happened, it kind of hit how real everything was. Like, I do have family there. I am, like, I'm Russian. Um, I already knew it, but obviously I grew up here, so... And when I found some like evidence, it kind of sparked this thing like I have to meet them, I have to go back, and I have to do this journey. I must. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And my parents like they completely encouraged that. And you, you didn't have anything in your back of your head thinking, should I be doing this? Mm. I don't know if I should be doing this. No, I think the question was always like, what happened to them? Yeah. And what, like, what can I do? Um, and knowing the story and then when I found out there's a possibility to know them and to meet them I think that just pushed me further you yeah just, you just want to know yeah and yeah. I kind of owned it as well like I was like with anybody that was close to me I'd say I've actually I'm adopted I'm like oh, I've actually found my family and it's it became part of like I guess part of my identity as well I could say more about who I was well you're not you're not you're not hiding it you know yeah so what did happen after you found them um, I think after we found them, it was kind of like a whirlwind of emotions, like, um, and we started planning for a trip to go back. Um, so we saved it a few years, um, and then I went, we went as a family when I was 16, so it's like six years after we found out. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that was a trip when I was 16, I went like in the middle of school and we went back and there's just so much to cover for that one. Man, that'll be a big story in yeah, itself. Yeah, I know. Well, let's let's narrow it down a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so, what was it like getting back to Russia? Obviously, you just don't know what you're gonna get. I, I feel being in New Zealand, especially, and maybe other Western countries, you don't really know much about Russia. And most people I speak to don't know anything about Russia. And so, the kind of idea that you have is very vague. Um, and so, I was prepared to like be everything to be unexpected um, and a shock. So, but then when I would, like when we finally went there, we had a translator and it was all like quite smooth. I think obviously the la there was a language barrier, um, so there's a lot of culture shock. Um, but all in all, it was like really like quite an amazing adventure. So, bef when you went when you were 16, what preparation did you do as a family? Like, did oh, yeah. you? You had to organise a translator, did you have to organise everything on the ground there a lot prior to going there? Or I think obviously I was 16, my brother was 14, so my parents did most of that. Um, we organised a translator and because my parents don't have passports, they had to um, get visas and getting visas is very tough in yeah. Russia, they, um, they kind of require you to... to like write down all the steps that you're going to take, um, where you're going to go, everywhere you're going to stay. So my parents had to have everything pre-planned, pre like every hotel, every train ride, everything had to be pre-bought like bought and ordered. So I think that was probably quite a lot for them. Um, they were also quite worried about like our mental state. They were wondering how it would be, how we react. And so we did, we were lucky and we did go and see like, a psychologist. Um, 
and I kind of realized that there was nothing there was nothing there I wasn't scared I was actually really excited um, and I was ready um, you felt like you were yeah ready. I was yeah. I felt like I was ready and there was probably no need for uh, me so yeah I think there was a lot to do but obviously I didn't really have to I just had to mentally prepare for that I guess the big thing is for a lot of people that want to go and search for families mm. it's always the fear of the unknown mm. and I guess you were, you were saying you were very excited, so you were ready to go. You know, you could have gone the next day. Is that right, to be fair? Yeah. All those questions I'd had my whole life since I was adopted. I already had those questions and I already had those doubts and worries. And then when I found them when I was 10, that's six years before I even left. Yeah. So I had six years of, you know, these kind of like thoughts and worries and fears. By the time it was actually happening, I was excited. Um, but it doesn't, yeah, it didn't come with its own It's a lot of time Problems. To, yeah. Yeah. But I also had those photos, you know, I had something kind of propelling me forward. Um, I knew what my family looked like, my birth family looked like, and I knew, you know, there was something to go there for. And so, yes, six years, I was probably wondering a lot, but I guess by the time <laughs> I, we were ready to go, I probably was quite ready. Yeah. It's a lot of, um, I guess, building up to when you're ready to go. Yeah. I, I, can't ex I can't speak for every person that wants to find families or mm. people that want to go because it is different. Um, some people get put off if they hear, hear some bad news about their birth parents yeah. and they don't want to go. Yeah. And I've come across many of those situations and I just always, I always say to myself, you give yourself your own time and when you feel like you're ready to go, you're yeah. ready to go, totally. whether you want to connect or not. So you being, when you were 16, so you got to Russia and so who did you meet first when you got to Russia? Um, it was kind of like an interesting story actually. We nearly mm. didn't even meet our mum when we first went. Um, the whole plan was we told her when we were coming. I don't know if it was our translator or the person who went and found them originally, but they, she like knew that we were arriving. And she was awake, she was at a dacha, which is a holiday home. <laughs> um, and so she was at a friend's dacha, and so she got the dates mixed up. And so we thought when we were there that she was avoiding us because she wasn't replying, but they just didn't have reception. So I think during that time, it was extremely stressful because mm. we came all this way and we just didn't hear, there was radio silence. And our translator was trying to call her every day and we were there for like a, a week or two. Uh, so it was really stressful. Um, so we thought we were meeting her first, but we decided to go... Um, back to the orphanage and see Galena, which is, um. so I have an older brother, Maxime, and Galena's his, like, grandma from his dad's okay. side. But, um, so we met her and we met the older, his, like, Maxime's dad and Maxime. Um, and that was a really amazing experience. So they were the first people, like, I, we actually fully met in Russia um, that had, like, blood, a blood relation to us. Um, and Maxime, he's a bit older, he's six years older, so I think it was quite like a shock for him. Yeah. Um, but later we found out that he had named me and he like, he definitely knew about me. So he named you? Yeah. So Crazy. My mum had asked him, because he's older, she yeah. had asked like, what should I name her? And then he's like, Anya. Well, Anna. So yeah, so it was really lovely to meet him, obviously. And um, we went to the orphanage after that. Um, so everything happened quickly. It was like within one or two days. Um, and we found out at the orphanage that my siblings, the younger ones, had um, had been in there for about a year and a bit, and we hadn't known that from our mother. So, right, yeah. so basically, we thought that they were with her, and she had lost her parenting rights within that time frame that we first messaged her when I was ten and sixteen, and yeah, when I was sixteen. So within that time, she didn't let us know, but I th like think it was embarrassment um, and fear. Ashamed. Yeah, shame yeah. and embarrassment, and I feel like I completely understand where she came from, but obviously it was a shock when you get there and then learn that. Mm -hmm. But when you're there, you can't really change anything. You just have to deal with it. Um, and it turns out they were in the same orphanage as we were in, so we were kind of going back and hitting two birds with one stone. <laughs> Not really, Re but... Were you reconnecting yeah. along the way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they were in the same orphanage that I was, I remember my earliest years in, and we weren't allowed to actually meet them. Um, they were like, they kind of consider us as strangers, and there's like laws in Russia where you can't just mm. walk in and meet people. 
but um, our translator he pushed for that and said that we are blood relatives and so on. So explain the whole situation. Yeah, right it took there. a while, a few hours, I think, and we were sitting this um, in the office with him. Um, and during that time, I got to meet some of the other kids that I actually um, were in like the same age group as me. So we had photos of them, and um, they they showed us like all these photos when I was five, and these boys walked in. So they were still in that orphanage, Crazy. Um, and they and obviously adopt like adoption had kind of stopped overseas adoption stopped around like 2001 yeah so that's when we came to New Zealand that's heartbreaking so, seeing yeah obviously I would have been in their position if not so yeah. but they were really excited um, and that was really quite sweet and then obviously they let in um, our mamas so my brother and I we had mamas so, that looked after us so explain mamas yeah so the caretakers in the yeah. orphanage they're kind of like, not like nannies or how to say, um, it is what it is, mamas. They are yeah. kind of like the step-in mums that are not blood related, but um, yeah, look after you. And yeah, I remembered mine actually, Mama Natasha, I remembered her face. Mama, Mama Natasha. Yeah. yeah, and we have two photos from the orphanage. So one of them, actually both of them for me yeah. are of her and me and this other boy and so I have a visual image of her and I already knew of her so when she walked in it was actually quite like I was just crying obviously and she was crying and another mama walked in mama Lena that I remembered as well and it was just such an emotional experience we really connected when I was there I remembered that I was very close with her and I actually remembered her but I didn't remember my mum like yeah. I was too young to remember her so I would say. So you had that really strong bond with Mum and Natasha, mm. and you feel it's it's because of what she did to help you in the orphanage when you were there. Yeah, I mean I can't remember everything she did. And, yeah. I just remember her presence. Yeah. Um, and knowing that, like some of my memories were um, that she, like I was her favourite. <laughs> you were her favourite. <laughs> and she yeah. said that again. Yeah. So that's that's been um, proven. So her and yeah, her and other mama were uh, always there, and so I remember them like distinctly. Yeah. So. So how long were you in Russia for at that time? Um, the first time. Yeah. Like, so I went into the orphanage when I was about two, so and I left around five. Oh, okay. So. so I was in there for three. Three. Three yeah, years. Three, two and a bit years, I think. And then seeing them again, it was just kind of like. Surreal. That's a good thing that you did though, because yeah, and they're still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. I've been back to my orphanage too, and I've met. I would call her probably, you know, Mama Olga. She was the yeah. lady that looked after me, and she was still there. I just I've seen a few photos and videos, but I do yeah. remember this woman that was that yeah, the mother figure, kind the of. mother figure of the orphanage and yeah. the group that I was in. And when I saw her, she just got emotional. She's mm. like, oh, they so like connect with you. Yeah, like, I remember this, but imagine all the children that they've been looking mm. after, and how they remember you is just un it's unreal. Honestly, it's kind of, it like a mother, isn't it? It is a mother. Yeah, it's a lady that is stepping in to give you a chance, mm. give you a second chance. Mm. And they're doing the you know they're the doing best they can best with thirty kids and what they can. Exactly. Yeah. So your first trip to Russia, when you're sorry, your second trip revisiting mm -hmm. your birth family and all of that. So. You went to your orphanage, yeah. and then during a few hours after that, who did you connect with? So that one day, actually, yeah. I had met, yeah, I met the two boys. I had met Mama Natasha, Mama Lena. My brother had met his uh, mama. Then we got the OK, so then I met my three youngest siblings. They knew of us yeah. already, so when they walked in, um, it wasn't kind of a shock for them because they did know we were related. Um, and I remember Marsha sitting in my lap and she was being really sweet and then we all went outside and went for this walk around this kind of park yeah. um, and they were like holding our hands and like we had a few photos taken and my dad let my I think it was Dima play with the camera <laughs> and so he'd never like obviously experienced the camera or anything like that so he took some photos so I think it was just like such a lovely bonding experience and it kind of felt like we were like a little family. You need to have that bonding experience though. Yeah. So obviously 
the whole experience is insane. Like it's not familiar at all. Um, you're going into kind of a foreign country probably. Um, so there's going to be a lot of kind of shocks to the system, I think. And, and so you never know what you're going to find. Um, I guess one of the shocks was we thought we were never going to, we were never going to meet our mum. Um, another one was we didn't realise our siblings were in the orphanage. So that means they're kind of going through the same thing as we did, except they haven't been adopted. Mm. And so that's a little bit worrying. Um, we don't know about our fathers, so we're never going to know about that. There's, there's lots of things that we're going to have to accept. Um, I think I was lucky that there was something there for me and that I found it. And I think that's really special. But it's obviously it's like, not the case, same case for everybody. It's not the yeah. full story though too, because you just still don't know about your birth father. Yeah, so I'm, and I probably will never know that story. And when I first learnt that, which I think was yeah, near the end of that trip and the second trip, um, I was resistant to that. I didn't, I, like, I wasn't happy that I couldn't learn about that and that she was reluctant to share that information. And, you know, the story changed many times. I'd written down each time I'd seen her and the story changed. So there's lots of things that I had to kind of overcome. Mm not glamorizing it but um yeah obviously there's this air of excitement at the same time like i am fortunate enough that people are alive and i can only make do with you know what information i do have and so i'm just going to treat the experience that i had and with the information yeah. that you know or the people you've met yeah you stick with that yeah exactly because there's only so much you can only do what you can exactly so yeah, yeah i think meeting my mum is a really interesting experience a lot of people ask me about that but I always just say it feels like meeting your aunt yeah like a long last aunt that you don't know maybe you haven't ever met or she met you when you were young um, and my mum was really like gracious she like gifted flowers to my mum and thanked them we had the translator of course mm. um, and she was very from what I can tell like Russian um, obviously her like characteristics and everything how she would like say, oh, wash your hands before we ate, or she'll kind of hold our hands and hold us close. And yeah. we, we like went with that, but at the same time, I have to remember like, we don't know her. Like, I don't even remember her. And so it was a surreal experience, but also yeah. kind of vague. Like, how do you respond to someone who cares about you so much and you just don't quite know who this person is? It feels you know like a I mean? stranger. It is a complete beginning. stranger, yeah. but that's why I say like a long lost aunt, because it's like they care about you. But I remember one of the things as well is like, how do your parents feel? And I remember looking back at my parents who were walking behind us and being like, I gave them a look, being like, you are my family. Um, we've, like I discussed with them earlier, like we're finding my mom, my birth mom, but I don't have anything. I'm not going to run off. Like, that's I it. feel like some parents feel like, oh, they're just going to go run off to their birth mum and they're going to connect with her. And not come back. Yeah, whereas there was like no connection kind yeah. of thing. So with your first revisit to Russia, revisiting part of your birth family, your siblings and going back to the orphanage, what overall, what was that like when you left? Did you, how did you feel when you left? Yeah, I had a lot of questions answered and, you know, it had been years of like thinking and worrying and what mm. happened and so obviously that put me at ease. Um, I think I was calmer, like inside. I had just done something for myself that was so, so massive. And um, I was really proud of myself as well. Um, but also, I think as a family, we also like connected more. I remember mean, before it, we'd like started learning Russian together. And then after I like continued on to learn Russian and I had promised my mum, I kind of said that I would come back um, and try to learn some Russian. And so I did that for myself and her, but mainly for her. Mm. Um, I thought it was important. So I think definitely left with a connection to her and the siblings. And then also Russia as a whole, like wanting to connect and to my roots, I guess. You're raised here, I'm raised here. But when I mention a lot about the Russian roots and stuff, mm. I always feel a little bit like awkward guilty or awkward. or awkward, you know? But you're not, it's okay, it's who you are. It's in your blood, your Russian mm. blood and stuff. So, did you ever feel a little bit odd about it, or no? I mean, it's just a—it's just how mm. I feel. So I'm just. Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, I never really thought about that. I think 
obviously coming here and not knowing any Russians, especially like Russians who spoke the language, um, that was difficult um, and say, and being quite proud and saying that you've gone back, especially to your friends who can't quite relate. Yeah. Um, and then where, where do you continue learning Russian and like what do you, what's the next step when you're just so far away? So I think that was really difficult. And I think lots of people have an idea of what Russia is like. And so when you say like, I'm Russian, I've been back, like if it was your friend, they go, oh, so how was it? Like, is everyone drinking vodka? Was it cold all the time? Was it cold all the time? <laughs> and you're like, well, I went in summer. It was actually kind of hot. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of, there's that. Um, it's stereotypes though. Yeah, stereotypes, <laughs> yeah. but then obviously if you're proud, if, you're, if that's your next big step is to go back by yourself and study, and people ask you that, uh, they don't quite get it. It's like oh, you're so, in New Zealand and you're going back to yeah. Russia again by yourself to study. Mm. So that's what you did. And that's what I did do, yeah. So it took a few years because I saved up to go by myself. Um, and we see flights and everything. It's quite expensive. So just out of high school, that was like my goal. And I think that was a, like a big drive for me. Straight out of high school, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So I, I did want to go to university, but I knew that there was something... Like I had a big journey and had something to do for myself and it was my mission kind of. And so that's how I always felt. And plus the promise that I made back to my mum, I just was like, okay, I'm gonna follow this through. Of course I to didn't learn. come. Yeah, to learn and to go back. So of course it came with like a lot of preparation. Um, I ended up studying in a school in Russia, an immersion school. So I did, um, it's called Exlingo. And so it's kind of it's semi-private, and so you have to pick between the two sites of Novosibirsk and Saint Petersburg. And I decided to initially go to Novosibirsk since it's in Siberia mm. and only eight hours train ride, like one hour flight from my hometown. Yeah. So and it was very hard there because I didn't think about how I'm starting off Russian, like learning the language, and no one else speaks English. Crazy. So it was a month of being there, staying with my homestay, who didn't speak the language and obviously there was a lot of other barriers there and such a difficult time. So what was that first month like going back to study? Um, it was extremely difficult. I, like I said, I was going to Siberia, so not many people spoke English. Um, I feel like there was at points that I was quite resentful or like maybe in denial of the situation, although that I'd gone and I decided to do this thing, actually doing it was extremely difficult. Um, I had so many hurdles, even just overcoming going to the supermarket alone and trying to order something in Russian. I was embarrassed I'd say something wrong or I, I would do something wrong in the customs because they had different things in supermarkets where you had to weigh things and I didn't know how to do that. There's just a lot of things like that that I just didn't want to overstep. Um, and so I remember not doing any of that stuff. I just kind of shut down. I just struggled with kind of getting out of there and trying to practice my Russian. I just wanted to be, I wanted to make sure I got it right. So when I was studying there, I was trying my best to like learn the grammar. And so I think the first month was extremely difficult. Um, and then it wasn't until I learned that I could do like a transfer halfway through to St. Petersburg that I thought, why don't I just change the scenery? Maybe it's just the place as well. I'm not like, I'm not inspired. So, so was that? So you wanted to go to St. Petersburg because you were feeling a little uncomfortable with yeah. the first place. Yeah, I was kind of. Yeah, I was hitting a wall. I think like mm. I, I was really trying, but I was reluctant at the same time, and I just like, I wasn't quite immersing myself in the culture the way I wanted to, and even just immersing yourself, I was just it was just very difficult for me, um, and I think because I'm also Russian, people expected me to already speak and they, I looked Russian and so it just, I feel it like added a bit of pressure. So going to St. Petersburg where there was way more students than Siberia um, and everyone was at different levels and going to have lunch and seeing how they did and like what they said, it made me feel way more confident and you know, they were on different journeys and they weren't adopted but they, you know, were doing their own thing and I think with that it helped support me and I opened up a bit more and I started realising how much I really like it. St. Petersburg was so fun. Nice place. So, so nice. So from there when I went back to um, Nova Sibirsk, they, they were like, wow, you're speaking now because I was reluctant to speak. So I think that was like a challenge in itself. 
So what is, so in St. Petersburg, you've got obviously, it's also a lot of people do speak English there Exactly, too. so that helped. So that helped a lot too, yeah. but you went to Russia to study the Russian language mm. and, you know, any regrets with that? I'm sure probably not, but yeah. there must have been so many challenges and yeah. a roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. It was insane. Um, briefly, I mean, I lost my phone. No, I lost one and I, um, one was robbed and one broke and I lost my wallet and so many things happened that made it really difficult um, to even just get by. Mm. Um, let alone just trying to work out how to order something or, you know, go to school every day. Um, but I was living with a homestay and in St. Petersburg they did speak English, so they were just much more willing to help me. So I think it was very difficult, but in the end, I would know no regrets, yeah. It's worth it. Yeah, 100%. Especially because if you want to do it, yeah. Just a whole lot of preparation. You must have had to really think about wanting to do that. And this isn't a bad yeah. thing or a good thing. This is just like, what advice would you give to somebody else? Or what did you have to prepare for? Yeah, that's, that's hmm. I think the fact that I'd already decided and I'd kind of made a promise to someone else, there's accountability there. Um, so externally, so I kind of thought, if I see my mum again, which I have, um, I want to be able to speak to her. I want to be able to speak to my siblings. So that was at the back of my mind. So it wasn't like I was doing it for me all the time. It was, of course I wanted to connect, but more so I wanted to be able to speak. And then, of course, it's an adventure. So mm -hmm. how long were you in Russia for altogether? Um, so for that period, it was around three months. It's a long time. Yeah. yeah, so there was that first month, then almost another month, St. Petersburg, and then afterwards I was finishing up, and my parents came in, my brother and my parents, they flew over from New Zealand um, and we all went as a family from Novosibirsk to, we did that little, it wasn't the Trans-Siberian but it was another like um, train. So it was like overnight, eight hours. Mm. Um, so we ha had that experience going on a Russian train. But yeah, so then we arrived, we had another translator there and um, I saw them for the second time. And this time it was their summer holiday. So we went to like the summer holiday dacha and I could actually speak to them this time. We played a bit of football and I, I felt like we really connected. This time it wasn't just through a translator, like it was one-on-one -on -one mm. or, and my brother couldn't speak Russian, but he was, yeah, he was like trying as well. And I could translate a little bit. And so it's good though like that you, it's good tennis. that you had that <laughs> skill though. I wasn't fluent and yeah. I, honestly, it was probably like a few words, like nothing compared to now. Um, but it was just something. It was yeah. just something that I felt like I could connect. Um, and then we saw my mum again and it was lovely too. And yeah. You went, you went traveling with your family. After that. They came and visited you in Russia yeah. for about a week or so. Yeah. And then you went over, did some traveling and then came back to Russia. Yeah. So what did you get up to? Were you still studying or what did you do yeah. next? So I just did another two more weeks of that um, immersion course but in St. Petersburg this time. And I loved my host family, so I stayed with them again. Yeah. And then I, I had to get a few tests done, which were um, was quite invasive. To do to do what? Exactly. So I had to get the tests done because I decided prior to all this that I wanted to volunteer in the orphanage, um, and or, or just do something to give back. I think because it was my orphanage and because my siblings are there, it was more of a reason like to spend time with them and to try give back a little bit. So they already knew of me twice because I'd been there a month before with my family. And so they knew through emails and calls that I was planning to do that and they had uh, accepted that, but I had to get some tests done. And those tests were very like, I remember having a few breakdowns because right. they were just very invasive. Uh, I had to get like psychology tests and a few other things done. And like, obviously it was all in Russian. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, so obviously that was like really tough, but my um, host family really supported me through that. And whilst I was studying the, at that school, and then I flew over to um, Siberia again to my hometown and I went in and had a meeting and it was just me, there's no translators. Um, with the Yeah, with the director of the orphanage. And it was just broken Russian, so it was probably really embarrassing, but obviously I had improved over three months. The whole total, yeah. And then we just um, agreed on 
me like coming for four days each week uh, for a total of two weeks and f during that time I spent three hours with the um, very young kind of toddlers mm. um, which is insane because if you think about it it's kind of like the roles were reversed I was there when I was from three to yeah. five and I was looking after that same age group and the mama like one of the directors walked me in and she was trying to introduce me and it was Mama Lena, one of the mamas that I'd met when I was 16. So I'd already like, been introduced to her again. I remembered her from much my childhood and, um, and I was now helping her look after children at the same age as I was, you know. So, was, so I know that it's, you know, you don't want to glamorize it of course, yeah. but there was a lot of up and downs. And yeah. how did you, how long were you there altogether? So it was two weeks and it was eight days in total. You wanted to do this and help out and you managed to get that done and help out with what you can. So yeah. are, you, are you happy, are you satisfied that you managed to do that and you know, ticked it off your list as just giving back to your orphanage? Yeah. Um, it wasn't really just for that. It, the fact that my siblings were there was mm. really important. Yeah. But during my lunch breaks after that, I got to spend time. I got to sit down with them and eat lunch there, and we played football and go went for like walks together. So yeah. it was a kind of way for me to see them without them leaving the orphanage because I couldn't. Um, so kind of coming into their area, um, and also trying to give back, and I also. Uh, try to teach this girl how to speak English, but in Russian, so it was very difficult. That's a different, totally was, different. <laughs> but with the only Russian that I knew. Yeah. So <laughs> hey, but it's good. So I think overall it was very like challenging. There was lots of different things, but it was more for, you know, trying to do something for them and also seeing my siblings again and to, uh, yeah, connect with them. Just everything you've done, I mean, everybody's got a different story, but this is like your one sake. Yeah. I've lost track sometimes because it's so much information, so much that you've done. Yeah, it is. So, me, me too. Like I'm trying to relay it and I'm like, where, what do I even start with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good so. that you can connect with your siblings like that. Yeah. And know so about special. your birth mother over time too yeah. and just do what you can. So yeah. I think I'm sure when you go back, it will be even, yeah. it'll be even more. Yeah, and I'm yeah. hoping to go back again, so, well, as you are. Hopefully you do. I need to get some mm. advice from you, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just, just briefly. So I'm going back for a long time. Um, for a long time. Six months or so. Okay. Uh, which, it might be shorter, might be longer. We'll yeah, find, we'll find run out with what it. Happened. I think the thing is, for me, is the only thing I'm really going to find difficult is yeah. the language. Yeah. Because I'm not fluent. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. But I think just like, what would you give to anybody that wants to go back to mm. say Russia or the birth country, any adopted person, um, I'm talking pro predominantly adoptees, but mm. them going back to the birth country and having that language barrier or just really, because it does, it is a struggle sometimes. It's like, what yeah. advice would you give to them? Yeah, if, if they do have a language barrier, then I would 100% suggest trying to learn at least probably not going to get conversational because I would say I've been trying since I was 16 and I'm not fluent. I would say at least try learn how to get by, order something at a restaurant. Mm. That will make it much easier for you. You'll have a security. So that's the first thing. I've managed to do that. You have. So that's okay. So I feel like you'll have like some security. <laughs> yeah. You feel like, yeah. um, feels like a little bit more at ease. Exactly. Yeah. So that's quite a nice thing. As well, because you already know that you're going to arrive and there's probably going to be like a whirlwind of new experiences yeah, and yeah. shocks and so you know eat, like making it a bit easier for yourself it's to like instead of that, that big or big yeah. wall it's right there and you cast it's just blocking everything yeah and you want to say something and you really want to express something it is a very it's a it's kind of like embarrassing like for me yeah i remember when that too. i remember me meeting my birth parents yeah i didn't know anything russian i had to always look at the translator and translate and um, I felt mm. quite embarrassed because I was born in this country, but I can't speak. I think that's such a big thing for adoptees, so, right? Like, yeah. Well, for me anyway, like, how, how do you not know Russian? I remember at the airport, I'd have my passport and they would say like, yeah. why don't you speak Russian? Why don't you speak? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> or something. And I knew that one line <laughs> and they would just be like, oh, yeah. I don't get you, but okay. But I, you, you've been studying. 
I've been studying, um, but I'm not, I haven't gone to an immersion school or anything like that, yeah. but I've been around a lot of Russian speakers and in Russia, I, when I stay with my birth father, I only speak Russian with him. Yeah. So it's very, it's very bad Russian, just FYI. It's not. No, it's not. I've heard no, it. Like, like, it's not, we have a conversation, but it's, he would understand me. It's to the point where now That's he can. That's all that matters. And he understands, like, it's like someone that's learning English. Same mm. deal. Mm. It's like, I understand this person, but. It, it's like when I'm trying to think of words, mm -hmm. I manage to figure out, sometimes I translate words in my head, but then there's this one or two or three words, so-and-so, that I just can't, I don't know the word of. It's just knowing, uh, the, yeah. just knowing the Russian version of it. The vocabulary is not there yet. That's, it all come. It all come. I think the first thing that we did as well was to learn a few words um, in the language, if there's a language barrier. So we, we kind of got some private lessons and we just learned a few verbs, how to get by, learn Cyrillic. So we could actually use the uh, metro and things like read that. It. We could read it and know where we're going. And I think that helped um, immensely. Um, and then to actually meet our family, I think I wanted questions answered. Um, I wanted to know what happened. And that was really important for me. And so having a translator to kind of, yes, there was that barrier, kind of connection, kind of, you don't feel as close to them and you wish that you could speak. In reality, um, you just make do with what you can. And at the time, a translator answers those questions and they do obviously try and make everything comfortable mm. and they kind of become part of your journey. Like we're kind of in touch with ours. So it's I would say, part, yeah. yeah, I would say, those are my two main things. But obviously prepare, like my parents didn't have um, passports. So you had, they had to plan their whole journey before. And um, depending which country you're from, of course. And emotionally prepare, like check in with yourself and see, like, are you ready? Um, have you done everything that you think you could do to feel comfortable going into this, like, um, like kind of foreign or mm -hmm. like... Yeah uncomfortable situation maybe potentially do you also feel like you may say oh, I'm I think I'm ready but I'm not sure yeah entirely because I feel like there's little things I'm missing out on but that's probably the fear of the unknown yeah you're right yeah I feel like you might always have that and I'm a perfectionist and I feel like that would have always been there so going is every little step done <laughs> at the end of the day they'll just keep you pushing still, you back. yeah you yeah. still need to go so I think if you've got the main things done and the security I like having security so that's like getting by or having yep. a translator um, then go for it yeah thank you very much that's okay thank you very much Anya <laughs>